For many people, the idea of paying several hundred pounds for a Trek IR or Toby Eye Tracker, or even a decent webcam is simply a cost that cannot be justified. But what if there was another, much cheaper option for head tracking? In this video, I'm going to focus on a solution that costs less than £10 and can be used in any game that supports Track IR. I will also make a quick mention of a free solution, but that only works in Star Citizen and only some of the time. In both cases, I'm going to make two assumptions. The first is that you have a modern mobile phone, or cell phone for those of you across the pond. Second is that you have some way to prop up your phone. I happen to have a cheap £10 phone stand from Amazon, but a box or case with a kickstand also works. That all said, welcome to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Verse. Let's start with that free option first, Facewear, which is integrated into Star Citizen. If you have a webcam, this is fairly straightforward. If you don't own a webcam, then the alternative is to use a free application called DroidCam, available on iOS and Android, to turn your phone into a webcam. Usage is pretty simple. Make sure your phone and computer are on the same network, start the phone and desktop app, then connect them. Unfortunately, it is pretty flaky as to whether or not Star Citizen recognises DroidCam as a camera source, so your mileage may vary. Now, go into the game settings, the FOIP options, select your webcam, and calibrate. Once you've done this, make sure you enable FOIP, then under Head Tracking Source, select Facewear. There are some downsides to this approach, however. First is that it's very much dependent on you having a decent camera with a good frame rate, and is very reliant on a brightly lit room to work well. Second is that when it does work, if, like me, you have a beard and or wear glasses, then due to the limitations of face wear, it can be extremely unreliable. Onto the cheap option then. This requires two components. The first is an application for PC called OpenTrack, a link to which can be found in the description. The second is something to feed information from your phone to OpenTrack. For this, I'm using an application called SmoothTrack, which is $10 US or £8.50 in the UK. Setup can appear daunting at first, but don't worry, I'm going to cover everything that you need. To start with, open both OpenTrack and SmoothTrack. In OpenTrack, set your input to be UDP over network and output as FreeTrack. Leave everything else as default. In SmoothTrack, set the IP address field to be that of your PC. If you don't know how to find this, open the Start menu, type CMD, open Command Prompt, type IPConfig, and hit Enter. It's the IPv4 field which is highlighted on screen. For those using Linux, the command is a little bit different, but if you're using Linux, I'm going to assume you know how to do this. Once you've done all that, tap the pause button on SmoothTrack and click Start in OpenTrack. Now as you move your head around, you should see the little Octodude also move around. The mirror box can help it make more sense for some, but it doesn't affect anything in-game. Now we need to tune the curves to your liking. I'd suggest loading a game for this. Open the mapping screen, leave max input as is, and click the line twice to create two points. Drag the first to the bottom and move it to a low value. This is your dead zone and allows some degree of head movement without triggering the head tracking. There's no correct value for this, so play around with it until you find a value that works for you. Now we need to set your range of movement. Move your head to the side the furthest that you feel comfortable. Note where along the x-axis the dot moves to, then drag the other dot you created to be in line with this. It will feel too aggressive at first, so move it to the right a bit at a time until you find a spot that you're comfortable with. For me, I find a value twice that of my maximum comfortable angle works best, but everyone's different. You can set it to be an acceleration curve too if preferred, wherein the further you look, the more the camera moves. To do this, simply click the line to create a third dot somewhere near the middle, and drag it around until you find the right setting. Right click any dot if you want to remove it. Now just repeat these steps for each of the axes. OpenTrack and SmoothTrack do support full 6 degrees of freedom, meaning you can map not just rotational but positional head movements as well. You can also map positive and negative on a different curve. An example use case of this is that I can look up much more than I can look down. So for pitch, I set the asymmetric mapping option and set a different curve for looking up versus looking down. Finally, I suggest going into the options and setting a keybind to center the track. 
Once you're happy with the movement tracking, it's time to set the in-game settings. Now this is of course going to vary per game, but as this is a Star Citizen channel, I'm going to focus on that game. Under the comms, VoIP and head tracking tab of the settings, set your tracking source to track IR. Now go through the general head tracking settings. Set toggle enabled to on because we want it to actually track our noggins. Positional offsets are for those who want to use translational movement whilst in the cockpit. I personally don't use these, but it's entirely up to you. Also recalibrate, I tend to leave on, but some may find it to be problematic. Disable while seated, I leave as no. It just lets you look around whilst riding in a jump seat, which I actually kind of like. Disable during FPS, now this one is going to be a Marmite option. Personally, I hate this, as it can be really jarring. Some might like it though, and others are gonna side with me. Disable during ADS is a self-explanatory extension of FPS tracking. Mobiglass and interaction mode are odd, as if enabled, they're linked to your state. That is to say that if you're seated and have tracking enabled for seating, then you can use head tracking with these. But because I have FPS head tracking disabled, these options are off regardless if I'm on my feet. This is kind of annoying as I actually find head tracking with interaction mode super useful, so hopefully they get decoupled in the future. The role options and external view are personal preference. Disabled in inventory, I actually leave enabled. It's a small quality of life, but as positional offsets remain enabled, even if you disable them in the cockpit, it allows you to physically zoom into the paper doll by moving your head, which makes interacting with that paper doll so much easier. But it's down to personal preference. And that covers everything you need to know. Any questions? Leave them down below. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.